Well, hi everybody and welcome to week 11 of the college football season and the Coach No Free Show. As always, joined by the head coach of Sacred Heart Football, Mark No Free, and here we go. It is set up for the showdown mm -hmm. that I know you had been hoping for when this whole season began. An opportunity to win an NEC championship. It's going to be this weekend against Duquesne. They sit with one loss. You guys sit at 4-0 with two games to go, and it's the opportunity that these guys have worked for since camp. How excited is everybody for this game? Well, I think they're all locked in. I think uh, if I told them that we were getting on a bus today to go, they'd be all right with that. Um, obviously, it's what you play for all year. You know, you work in the off season and uh, morning workouts in January and February, you know, the spring ball and it's cold and wet out and then grinding through camp. Uh, this is what you want. This is the situation you want to put yourself in to be playing meaningful games in mid to late November uh, with an opportunity to win the NEC. And our kids know what's at stake. They know what's in front of them. Now they just have to lock in and uh, you know execute what we're expecting them to do. As before we go back and revisit the win against Robert Morris, I want to ask you, you've obviously coached a couple of championship teams. You've been around this program for a long time, 26 years now, I believe. What is unique about this team? What is something that makes this 2018 team special? I, I would say, no, one, um, the chemistry that they've built since last summer. Um, the year, you know, in the summer, they're very close. Um, the other thing is they don't panic. Uh, they, you know, they buy into what we're, we're teaching and what we're selling and um, they hold each other accountable. Um, but I would say the leadership, the chemistry, and, and they play hard. Like they believe in playing for each other. They believe in playing for the Sacred Heart University Pioneers. Um, they're, they're close. There's no finger pointing and when things go bad, I mean, they're just, and there's a, there's a sense of calmness about them, you know, but um, on Saturday, you know, at 12 o'clock, they're going to strap it up and they'll be ready to go. I can promise you that. All right, let's revisit this past week because you put yourself in a position with another conference win and a very thorough one against Robert Morris, the running game. It has to start with the running game. And you guys have had a good running game all year. I think Jordan Meacham has now run for a hundred yards five times this season. But what he and Julius Chestnut are doing over the last two games is next level kind of running game. Why has it been so effective? Uh, well, it starts up front. You know, it starts with our offensive line and, and Coach Gunning Smith and uh, getting those guys to play hard and, and know their assignments. And uh, they're doing a great job. I mean, you know, they're, they're coming off the ball. They're being physical. Uh, they know what they're doing. And then all you got to do is give one of those two backs a crease and, you know, they can hit it. And uh, Jordan and, and Julius have been doing a phenomenal job. I mean, I couldn't be happier for those two guys. Um, they work their tails off in and out of season. They're great kids. And, uh, you know, you just keep feeding them the ball and they keep getting those yards like that. That's what you want. You know, you want to be able to pound the rock and, and to set up the pass. And then you add Duke, who also has close to 500 yards rushing as well. I mean, that's, that's a great three-headed monster in terms of getting yards on the ground. And um, I think it starts up front with our offensive line. And you talk about Jordan Meacham and Julius Chestnut, Ch Chestnut winning Rookie of the Week again. Uh, these guys have run for, I think it's almost 800 yards over the last two games. How do they complement each other with their running styles? Well, they both, when they hit the open field, they both can take it to the house. They both have pretty good speed. Um, and they run hard. Uh, they run hard and their legs never stop churning. Um, and they find that crease and, you know, sometimes you're looking on the sideline. Uh, and it looks like it's all balled up. The next thing you know, they scoot out and, and they're the second level. Um, they make they do a great job of cutting and keeping the same speed when they cut. You know, and uh, they got great vision. Um, and they're tough to bring down. I mean, you you look at uh, Julius. He's only a freshman. He's 230 pounds. And Jordan Meachin is one of the stronger kids on the team. I mean, after he just rushed for 300 yards last week on Sunday, he's in the weight room. You know, squatting and cleaning and doing everything. I mean, they're they're tough, strong kids, and uh, they love to play the game. And I can't be happier to see the success that they've had so far. Although when you guys came out on your first drive, it was the passing game that kind of set up the running game. A first down pass to Ed Cudahy, mm -hmm. the tight end, who's done a nice job blocking up front, and of course Andrew O'Neill with a couple of catches, Kezio Snelling targeted for some big plays so you have a passing game also that complements that running game even though it seems like the running game right now is bouncing off that passing game yeah you know uh duke does a great job spreading the ball around and we got some pretty good receivers and uh again if you're running the ball like we are and you're getting you know three four hundred yards a game on the ground that just helps you out in the pass game but uh you know it also turns the clock a little bit faster and uh you know, control the ball, control the clock, and uh, gaining yards, and then you got to be able to finish when you get in the red zone. And that's kind of been our success here the last few weeks. And, of course, you're controlling the running game on the other side of the ball. Chris Adjamang with two and a half 
uh, tackles for loss, had a sack and a half in the game against Robert Morris. What is he doing right now that makes him such an effective pass rusher and allows the defense to control that running game on the other side? Well, uh, Chris is, you know, he's doing a great job. I mean, he's getting better each year. He was, last year was his first year starting. Um, this year, he's even gotten better than he was last year. Um, when Chris does what he's taught to do, and uh, he's got a great motor, he's athletic, and he's big. He can do a lot of things. He can get after the quarterback, and he can play the run. He's not a one-dimensional guy. Um, and again, he just, he's playing with a motor right now, and he's playing well, and we, we need him to continue to play well in order to win. You go back and you look at uh, the two inside linebackers as well. Um, Mike Weiland had, I think, nine tackles this weekend, a half sack and two tackles for a loss. Yeah. Pat Lukert's back. Um, and then, you know, Nolan Provenzano gets a second interception of the game or of the year, uh, who's doing a great job back there as well, controlling the back end and all the checks. And uh, they're really playing well right now on, on defense. You know, they're, they're running to the ball. They're buying into Coach Cook's system. They know what's at stake, and they're playing hard. And that's, and that's half the battle. And you ask me what separates this team or what's special about these kids play hard. They play hard for 60 minutes. Obviously, the, you know, the course of a season is 12 weeks. It's, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. There's a lot of things that could go right. And when you had some of those spells where we lost two or three in a row, uh, obviously we weren't playing well. But the last three weeks we've been playing good football, and part of it is because the kids are playing hard, they're running to the ball, they're being physical, and we got some guys back that, were, uh, that, were, that are healthy now that weren't healthy earlier in the year. So we move forward and look at Duquesne. They've got some weapons, Nahari Crawford. They only have one loss, um, and they're always tough to play, especially on the road. What are the keys against Duquesne? Well, obviously, we got to stop 32, the running back, Hines. I mean, he's, he's probably one of the best, if not the best, in the FCS. Um, and we got to stop him. we got to stop number one, Crawford, the receiver. Um, on, on defense, those are the two guys that you got to take away. And offensively, we got to be able to run the ball. You know, we got to be able to run the ball and make good decisions with it. Uh, no turnovers on the offensive side of the ball. And defensively, stop those two guys. Play hard for 60 minutes. Um, execute your assignments and do your job and do what the coaches are teaching you to do and we'll be okay. We'll be in the game and hopefully have a chance to win it at the end. All right. Well, we are really looking forward to Saturday afternoon. I know those of us uh, from this side of uh, the NEC over in Connecticut will be watching and you'll go on the road and a lot of interest in this one because if you win it, you've won it all. And there is another game to go after that, but yep. the opportunity is in front of you here to get it done this week. So yep. good luck. Hopefully it's a great trip. Very good. Coach Mark Nofrey is always joining us here on The Coach's Show. It's Sacred Heart in Duquesne, Saturday afternoon in Pittsburgh on the campus of Duquesne for the Pioneers, a chance to win a third NEC title in the last six years.